Um, all right, so we're we're recording this. Uh, coach Charlton from UMaine is uh, going to be second year at the helm, correct, Coach? Yep. Certainly appreciate uh, Coach taking the time to uh, come on and and, and join us. Um, we're going to talk a little bit. I got a couple of questions I'm going to ask him, and then he's going to kind of go into his presentation um, on uh, creating a winning culture. But if you guys have questions as he goes, throw them up in the chat. And uh, when you start going, Coach, I'll take my screen kind of off. But if a question comes up, I'll pop back up on. Okay. So that's how you know something's out there. And I'll, I'll kind of watch the chat room and, and let the latecomers in. Um, just wanted to uh, kind of get a little bit of an update before we start. How's it going for the main guys who are working out for the NFL teams? In particular, I've seen some stuff with Ernest Edwards. Yeah, I mean, it, it was really great what, what they ended up doing. Uh, you know, Bruce Johnson was a former player of ours who's up from uh, Rochester, New York. And he put it together. So... Earn, uh, Josh Huffman, a couple of those guys, they all participated and uh, it seemed to go really well. You know, Earn ran well, which we all thought he would. Um, that, that's definitely a good alternative. With the rest of the guys, you know, they're trying to figure it out. We're trying to see what we can do for them. Uh, you know, it's a difficult process in the NFL, obviously, is, is you know, it's tied our hands a little bit. There's nothing we can do, which, you know, for good reason. But guys are, are ready, they're training, we communicate with them. And then uh, Manny Patterson would be the other big one. He's still rehabbing his knee. So, you know, there's not a whole lot he would have been doing, but he's doing really well. So it's, it's all positive uh, considering what's going on right now and the limitations. But for, you know, for Earn, I was definitely very happy and, and Huff as well to participate in that. He ran, four, was it 4 4 one? Is that what I saw? Yep. That's awesome, man. Yep. Awesome. Um, how are things looking for next year? I know um, your, your quarterback got some, you know, got some time last year and got in there. So uh, that, you know, that's good moving forward uh, for next year, but what's the outlook kind of on next year's team? I mean, we feel really confident, you know, it feels, it feels like it's a mile away right now because of everything that's going on. But um, you know, we, we obviously have a, a very good young quarterback in Joe Fignano and, and we brought a number of guys in as well who are young um, and are some very good players and good prospects. So we'll have a pretty large quarterback room. Uh, running back room is wide open right now. So that's exciting. There's a lot of competition that's going to be in there. You know, Fitzy uh, graduated, so there's definitely some spots there. Wide receiver, you know, Aaron and Quan graduated, but we still have a good uh, nucleus there like we always do here uh, with Andre Miller from Old Town and Devin Young and uh, Jay Kenny, a few guys we brought in. So, we're you know, we're excited about that position. Um, tight end, Sean Bowman was a really good player for us last year, and we're, and we're continuing to evaluate that. Mike LaVarrier is another guy. Daniel Reimer, we bring back all five of our starting offensive linemen. Um, and, and really our top eight offensive linemen are all coming back. So in that regard, we're very, very confident offensively just because, you know, there's not a lot of people that can say that. Um, you know, Liam Dobson and Chris Mulvey really being the headliners there. Uh, but we bring back all five, which is exciting. And then, uh, you know, defensively, it'll be a new D-line for the most part. We have a couple guys that have played like Jamel Wiley um, and some of those guys. Linebackers, the, the big one getting back is Deshaun Stevens. You know, he's our captain. He uh, was an All-American the previous year. He's going to be back from an Achilles, um, along with a number of other guys that played. And then defensive back, I mean, we have three guys that, that were starters, and they're all back as well. So there, there's some people we need to replace, and naturally year to year, that's always how it is. But uh, we feel very confident in some of our younger players. I, I keep saying to the team, we have a young team, but it's an experienced team. We don't have a million seniors, but our sophomores and juniors have all played, you know, dozens of games, FBS, CAA, all across the board. So we're very confident, but, you know, we'll see how everybody, everybody transitions when we actually get back. I know, uh, you know, we lost, we lost quite a few skill guys off this year's team, but we bring back the majority of the O-line and the Q, and I think anytime you can bring – yep. you're going to bring something back, that's a good place to start right there, right? Yeah, I mean, the fact that we have our entire offensive line back, um, you know, and, and, our, and our quarterback, and there'll be competition at, at all those spots, but that's very encouraging, and we're always very confident in our skill players. You know, of course, we know we lost some really, really good ones, some special ones, but um, we do feel confident with the, the core guys that we have come back. Um, usually when we have the clinic, of course, we, we don't have that this year. Um, Get Coach Capone going on in the background here. Let me see if I can get him off. Um, usually, you kind of give us just a little bit of a message, you know, for, for the main coaches for the upcoming season, and, and talk a little bit about uh, the recruiting process. So, you want to you want to go in on that for a minute? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're 
again, very, very excited and opportunistic about where things are at. And, uh, you know, we have five guys uh, that we signed coming in right now. Uh, we already had 11 on the team, so that, that gets us to 16 Mainers on the team. Uh, last year we had 17, and that's always, you know, that can, that can add as the offseason goes. So uh, we've tried to do a really good job recruiting the state and taking the best players in the state. I think we just got to continue to keep the lines of communication open. Um, you know, we're, I'm pushing the staff really hard, and I think the assistants are doing a good job uh, hitting everybody up, texting, email, and calling, especially during this time when we have time. So I think the outlook just in terms of recruiting and taking main players is it's at an all-time high. You know, we've had a number of guys that have contributed in years past that, that have been great players here, and uh, that, that's what we want to continue to do. Um, and then just in terms of, like, main high school football, you know, last year was a really exciting season. Uh, we were able to make it to a number of games just, you know, through the recruiting process and, and had a number of our recruits come out to our games. But – um, I think, you know, the, one of the big topics always is, is eight-man football and, you know, what's that look like and those type of things. And uh, the one thing I'll say on that, and, again, I'm not involved in it day-to-day, -day, but football is football. And the number of guys that you have on your team that makes it the safest, um, I think it's the best possible situation. So um, I think anything that we're able to do to increase enrollment, to increase the number of guys playing football, um, I'm all for. So I think the – I think the prospects are very, very optimistic. I think they're very positive. Um, I think we just got to keep communicating and doing a great job that way um, so we can take your players and evaluate your players and get them to camp, hopefully, if we have that this year. But we're looking forward to an exciting season, you know, on our end and then also yours. Awesome, Coach. Thanks. I'm going to let you get right into it now um, okay. so you can go ahead and, and kind of move forward with your presentation. So looking, looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody see that all right? Good, PowerPoint good? Yeah, you're good, coach. All right, so, you know, this is kind of a combination of, uh, you know, our full uh, installation that we do just generally at the beginning of semesters. Um, I included some extra things that, that we typically add in, like for training camp and things like that. But I, I wanted to give everybody a full picture um, of how we communicate, of what we do, and how we've created um, a winning culture. You know, uh, University of Maine has a lot of history, but, you know, in the last 20 years, uh, we've had difficulty repeating winning seasons over and over again. Um, and, you know, I'm going into my sixth season, my second as the head coach. So our, our mission is to create a permanent winning program. And I think in the past few years, we've done a good job, and, and we've really improved that and been able to take some strides. Um, but that all comes down to culture. And, and I really believe that. We, we believe uh, and are very confident in our ability to recruit and bring in great quality young men that, that are good football players, but also really quality people, because I think that was something, um, you know, in years past where we really weren't a whole team that way. In the past few years, I really feel like we, we've gotten to that point. We have a very strong culture here. And so our messaging right now is very tight, and I think that's important. We don't have a lot of words. We don't have a million buzzwords that are all over the building. We have a few that are very important and very critical to what we do. So right now, our biggest thing is the, the championship mentality. And what that really means, and I'll talk about it in a minute, is you're taking it day by day. Everything I do is at a championship level, and I'm trying to ask myself if I feel like I raised to the level of a champion that day. And obviously, that's a little bit generic, but I think when we got to a point last year, uh, we were two and five. We had had some tough losses. Obviously, we had a number of injuries that were difficult, but uh, nobody was making any excuses. And we just said, we need to worry about what's going on today. And that changed our season. That's when we started winning. We went on that winning streak, and we kept calling it the championship mentality. And I think that really changed things for us. So our core values have really developed over the years. Um, you know, Coach Cos hired me. has been a big influence in my life. Obviously, Coach Arasimiak, I worked for, and, and a number of these uh, beginning principles, he started and we built on them, um, with the, these two being one of them. Uh, accountability and belief are two core values about being a great teammate. Those are the first two things that you need to have in this program. So if I go into a team meeting and ask somebody, what are our two biggest main core values, they should be able to spit this back to me. And we're very big on speaking the same language. That's something we talk about a lot. Guys need to be able to spit the words back. They need to be able to speak the same language. Everybody has to say the same things to build the culture. So being accountable to your teammates 
and then believing in what we're doing in the messaging of the coaches, but really more importantly, the players, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So to get to that full championship mentality, I felt like there was a few things that we really needed to work on last year and then moving into this year as well. And that was pride and discipline. You know, creating a history, creating a culture, um, that involves having pride. And not, not having an excessive pride, but be, being prideful about your work, being prideful about your program. You should go home and want to wear the colors. That's why I'm very big at, when we're at these clinics about talking to our coaches about, you know, being proud of the University of Maine. It's the Division One University in the state. We want our guys to walk around and be proud of that product. And, and obviously, a lot of times winning helps that. So that, that's a big part of our mission. But we want guys to have pride. And then discipline is a big aspect of it that we talk about. And we get a little bit more into that as we go. So I think this slide's pretty important right here. Discipline is just everyday execution of the details. That's every day, every day. So I'm disciplined in my approach. I'm on time, I'm doing the right things. I'm following the right leaders. I'm believing in the right things and using the right language. My discipline is every day. And pride is my long-term vision. That's what we're trying to create. That's what we want ideally. And that comes from discipline in a lot of ways. And so like, there's a lot of easy ways to, to verbalize all these things, but we try to go from the larger, bigger words that we want guys to understand and then break it down into what exactly that means. So the locker room, the weight room, the offices, everything that we do reflects a championship pro program. And you need to have pride in what you're building and what your culture is. So every single night, the locker room has to be completely spotless. There's nothing on the floor. Uh, that was something we did last year. If we don't do that and we have an issue with it, then uh, they know that basically you can get locked out. So that was something that we did um, last year. Our guys take a lot of pride in that. Uh, that's one little thing that really, really matters. So there's nothing on the floor in there. We cl clean up the weight room. Uh, when we're in the dome, the guys clean up. It's not just Coach Lynch and his assistants. Our players clean up and they help out. And the same thing with the staff. Our offices should be clean. Everything should look like a championship program. I don't believe in a lot of gray. I think things are pretty black and white in a lot of areas, especially with football. And everything should reflect the championship program. There really shouldn't be anything else that says otherwise. So the championship mentality, again, what really started uh, getting the ball rolling. And you know, when we were at our lowest, that was when we rose to our best. And I think that was because we really concentrated on what we needed to do day to day. And, and that's by defining these things. And I think anytime, no matter what your words are, everybody has words, everybody has things they want to put on the wall. Whatever that is, you have to define it for them and then give that to them so they can understand it and spit it back to you. A champion obviously defeats his opponents and his rivals. We don't play anybody for a long time and we'll see, hopefully we are playing on September 3rd. So what am I doing right now to bring the championship mentality? So we just stress to the guys to worry about today. We used to have goals. We would have all these things we would talk about, and they were great. Again, we were very successful two years ago. Uh, those are all great things. But this team right now, we worry about today. Our goal is to do the best we can to be a champion today. And we just keep preaching that over and over and over again. And I like to look always at the, the players in the media when they talk to people. And I always say to them, we want you reflecting whatever it is we're talking about. So that's what they usually say is it's about today. And that's what the championship mentality really is. Mental toughness, of course, everybody wants to talk about that. We believe we have the talent. We believe we do. Are we the most talented team in the conference or against the FBS teams we play? Not always, not always. So we have to maintain our focus every day and we have to gain the championship mental toughness. That's what the mentality really is. Being process oriented, not result. Of course, this is a big Coach Saban thing. Winning comes from the process. You know, I tell the players all the time, I sit there daydreaming about beating Ball State, about, you know, the, the season and winning and all those types of things. But there is a process that gets you there that is more important, and that dictates the result. If you just think about the result all the time, which I think was a little bit of what we did at the beginning of last year, you know, that can get you caught up in some things. You have to be very process-oriented and think about what you need to do today because we have to overcome a number of things here at the University of Maine, just like a lot of you guys do at your spots. Controlling the process. Like, what can I do? Focus daily on the personal improvement. So what am I doing day to day? Well, that's in how we practice and prepare. We always say it, be a, pro be a professional. I should train like a professional. When I ask our team who wants to play in the NFL, 
99% of them raise their hand. So act like a professional, bring something to write with every meeting, make sure I'm engaged every meeting, make sure I'm on time, all those little things like simple things we try to be very, very hard on initially because that typically dictates how it's gonna go for us moving forward. Attitude and demeanor, I use the word demeanor all the time. I'm a big believer in this. You know, this was something that um, I, I really picked up from Coach Adazio when I was at Boston College. Your demeanor is huge. What's my body language like? You know, if you're the guy who's after every single sprint that's absolutely gassed and you're bent over and you don't look very good, well, how can I rely on you to do X, Y, and Z when it really comes down to it? And that goes the same in the games. And, and that's something we talk about actively, even uh, during game time, when we're in the huddle, when we're taking the sideline, when we have conversations. It's what's our demeanor like? Because that says a lot about who we are, what our mentality is. And then listen, you can control how you play on game day. You can't control your opponent. You can't control what that's going to be like and how that dictates. But you can control what you do. That's, and those are our, our processes that we really dictate ourselves. And I think personal improvements being the biggest one. Big thing we talk about, we break it down on family almost every single time we break something down. I do really 90% of the time. Love drives the program. The team is number one, and, and we talk about this a lot. The individual does matter. You know, saying the, the, the team is the only thing that matters, yes, absolutely. The team is first. But there's no doubt that I, I always say this. I want things. Our players want things. The individual does matter. But every decision that we make is about the team. That's number one. So the individual does matter, of course. If that all aligns, and at the end of the day, those things meet, that's great. But what we need is complete alignment. Uh, alignment is another big buzzword we use. Really, really believe in that. Alignment is from the staff all the way down to the players, to the support staff, to everybody in the building. Everybody has to be aligned in what we're doing. The individual matters. That's great. But everybody needs to be aligned, and the team is number one. And so when we talk about family, you know, we mean that. We tell the players and their parents when we recruit them, you're handing your children, your sons off to us. So at the end of the day, we need to take care of them and love them. We'll talk about coaching hard in a minute and how that goes hand in hand. But at the same time, we need to all be aligned. We all have the same mission. So this is a little bit more of like the, the nitty gritty stuff, just general expectations of, of what we have. Um, some of this will be applicable, some of it won't, so I'll kind of buzz this. But our study all hours and class checks and standards are very important. Our GPA has been rising uh, the last three semesters, so that's been great, and that certainly correlates with a lot of things in terms of success. Training room, we always talk about represent the program the right way. Use great language in there. Know who's listening. Know who's around. Make sure you represent yourself well. And then just in terms of recruiting, you know, we try to give seniors um, a little bit of a break on the officials. Recruiting is a big part of it. Everybody plays a role. Recruiting is the number one most important thing that we do. We need talented players. We need good players. We can't win if we don't have good players. But we need great people, people that fit our culture and that are about the things that we're about, because ultimately that's going to be how we win at the University of Maine. Our culture has to dictate that. There's really no other way to put that, because, again, Recruiting is about taking talented players, but it's really about getting great people that fit your culture. And then, of course, at the bottom, workout attire, non-negotiable. We are a team. We dress the same. We look the same. Sometimes, you know, in terms of budget and things like that, that stuff doesn't work. We've been able to kind of work some things out to where we really have a good system with that. I like everybody dressing the same and looking the same. I think it's very important if you're able to do that. So when we meet, we always talk about how you have earned the opportunity to take that next step in our championship program. So when we meet, that's got to be in an elite high level, championship mentality type level. Whenever I walk in, there shouldn't be any phones out. There's no phones out. We, we have challenges here because we don't have a football building yet. So our classrooms are really where we meet. So guys obviously have their phones on them. So we say there are no phones when I walk in the room. I walk in at the same time every morning. I like guys interacting with each other. I don't want any phones out or anything like that. There's no hats. Everybody's sitting up. Everybody has good demeanor, and everybody should have eyes on whoever the speaker is. But we sit by class. We take pride in the standing of where you are in the program. So the seniors should be up front. You should be wanting to push yourself to the front of the room. If you're sitting in the back and you're leaning back and you don't have good demeanor, again, I'm not going to be very confident to put the game on the line with you. And then just in general, 
we do a lot of winner loser and competitive type things. You know, we get guys up on the board. We'll do competitions. We'll do fun stuff. You know, it's not all football all the time. Again, we like to have fun. We're a young staff. Uh, so we do a lot of different things that are winner loser. We have guys pick sides uh, with like very, very simple stuff. Like, you know, name everybody in the conference. Uh, we played a game of Madden once uh, last year. So we do a lot of different things, but it's all winner loser. And there's always some sort of punishment that goes along with it um, to correlate to winning. And then the biggest thing is football is the best part of our day. Get better every day. Don't loathe it. You got to love it. If you're going to play at the University of Maine, you got to love football. You got to love it. It's academics and it's football at the University of Maine. So that's got to be the best part of your day. Uh, expectations is gen generally, obviously, be on time. If you're late, you're not going to be there. You got to go. So we don't really uh, mitigate on that at all. You have to be on time. That's the number one thing in this program. Uh, what's your purpose? Was that rep at a championship level? Do I need a coach to be watching you all the time? Is that what I need? And especially at the high school level where you're trying to see different guys develop, you got the freshman who's never lifted before or a senior who's been in your program for a while. You know, who, do I need to watch you the whole time? Are you going to be coachable? Are you going to want to actually try to learn? Are you going to push yourself? You know, those are the questions you even have to ask college uh, players, as you guys know. So we try to really push that and just do that in the weight room. The weight room, the dome for us, which is our off-season runs and uh, challenges that we do, and then everything on the field, it should all be the same. It should all be the same. Be coachable and be accountable. And then bring energy. I always spell it that way. It's something funny I do with the players. We call it NRG. Everybody knows what that is. Bring energy every day. Energy every day. I, I tell the guys, and, and I, I learned this a long time ago, we practice in the morning. So there's going to be times just like every human being where you get up and you're like, you're dragging, you don't want to get up. And I always say to the guys, like, what if I come into the team meeting and I have no energy? I'm exhausted. Well, people are going to feed off of that and they're not going to have great energy either. So bring it. Sometimes you got to fake it initially. Sometimes you do. It's just the fact of what it is. That's how human beings are. But bring energy and find a way to do that because that creates positivity all the time. So our practice prep, which, you know, of course, we, we don't have the uh, opportunity to do spring ball. So this would be more applicable for like training camp, hopefully. Um, being on time, always over communicating. You know, guys have training room things going on, um, you know, different class conflicts, whatever it is. And then we always post and text the guys the schedule and the depth charts every day. So that everybody knows there's no confusion about anything at all. Everybody knows what's going on. Taped and treatment, that's already done. You should be ready to go for your meeting. Um, again, training room policies and position stuff. This is all just like kind of more nitty gritty things. Uh, University of Maine gear. This is a big thing for me. Um, if, if you have other colleges gear on, that's not okay when we're in the building or we're in a football setting. You can do what you're going to do outside of this place. And obviously in high school, it's a little bit different. But you guys wouldn't want to see somebody wearing another high school sweatshirt of one of your best players. You should be wearing your gear and representing things. Now, our guys, they wear the sweats a lot. So naturally, that makes it a little bit easier. But I want our guys in our gear all the time. Expectations. A lot of you have been to our practices. Um, and again, these are all open. So we would love anybody to come by. We're always in the morning. Um, but during training camp, especially, you know, if you don't start camp till later, we'd love to have everybody come by. Um, our culture creates an elite tempo. Our practices will be organized and high energy. We take a lot of time in organizing these. Every coach is very, very involved in what we do. And so the tempo is very important. Energy is very important. We coach off the film. We do coach on the field as well. But our practices are pretty tight. It should be about two hours, but there should be very, very little break time. Everything that we do that is break time is set up that way intentionally. And there are always winner loser segments, which again, I'll talk about here in a second. This is one thing I saw once that I thought was interesting. Um, and it depends really on the state in terms of high school football. But for us, over half of our real padded practices during the whole season are in training camp. Now, it's a little bit different for everybody, obviously. Like, like when I played high school football, we had six days of training camp. But training camp is where you get a lot of your work done in full pads. And you don't really get that back, especially as we transition to more and more um, of where you're wearing different things. You're not wearing full pads every day. I think it's really important to emphasize training camp to guys. They got to know how important that is. Attitude, effort. Th those aren't things that, that we feel like we need to coach. Those are non-negotiable at this point. If you're a Division I football player, 
I shouldn't have to coach you on those things. Does that happen? Of course, uh, it certainly does. But those are really non-negotiables. We talk about that a lot as a program. Uh, that really defines who we are. Uh, we have the rock that's out on the field with the one direction arrow. Um, that's all about alignment. So we always jog to and from there. Coach Lynch, our strength coach, is always there to greet them. Our newest policy that I really, really like this a lot, uh, we took this from Minnesota uh, with Coach Fleck, is they have every position group come out together. So when you take the field, no matter what you're doing, you come out as a position group. And, and I really like that, and that's something that we instituted uh, in the last couple of weeks before the, uh, the virus took hold. But everything you do is as a position group. So if you're the guy, like Andre Miller, honestly, who gets out there like an hour early and is always on time, but you know what? Dre, you're a senior. You're responsible to make sure now that all these other wideouts are going to be there and they're going to be on time. It's a little thing that we do, but I really do like it. I think it's going to be a good thing. And then, uh, you know, we have stripes on our helmet. New team members always have to earn them. Uh, this is something that we picked up uh, from Ohio State. Basically, you have to earn your stripes to get on the team. So the coaches and the staff meetings will vote on guys when they think they're ready. Uh, that's for all new team members. So for you guys, any freshmen that come in or transfers, you got to earn your stripes. And then we do a little thing at the end of practice where the guys will stand up. They thank their coaches. They thank their teammates. And they sit down. And then the next day, they have their stripes. So it's a little thing we do. Tempos, tag. Tagged by everybody. Uh, you know, that's just walking by. Literally, I'm just tagging with two hands. Emphasizes pretty heavily on defense. You know, don't want guys just whizzing by. If we want them to whiz by, we'll say that. But we want guys tagging off. Thud is always thud in the box, tagging the perimeter. We're not looking for anything crazy on the perimeter. We shouldn't have DBs laying out wideouts. We shouldn't have wideouts cracking anybody out on the perimeter. So we should always be thudding the box, tagging the perimeter. Blitz periods are under control. We talk about that and just staying up is the emphasis, especially as our game moves to more of this in practice. Uh, thud is really important, and that takes coaching. Guys got to stay up. Guys got to stay up. You got to dictate it. And a lot of times, too, even in the beginning of training camp, you know, I'll stop the whole thing if I don't think it's going well and restart it because guys need to understand the tempo and what we're looking for. And then live, pretty self-explanatory. Ball carrier is live. We're tackling high. We're not going low. There's no cut blocks on offense. I know that upsets some of our offensive coaches, but we don't cut block. Um, that's something we teach an individual. Uh, never put your teammate in a compromising position. We don't need to be laying anybody out or targeting anybody. Uh, we haven't had any, any issues with that at all. Our guys are very, very smart. We protect our teammates. And then I am an uh, offensive uh, guy at heart, so the quarterback never gets touched. Uh, we did make Grant Hartley from Edward Little live a few times. He was begging Coach Dresner uh, all throughout spring practice last year to do it. So we did do that, and that was a lot of fun. Um, but the quarterback is never to be touched. Some programs do do that, and I understand the merits behind that, um, but that's something that I believe. All right, Kazi. So this is something we started doing two years ago. Um, you know, after this season, it'll be three. And Kazi is short for Coach Cosgrove, so we did name it after him. We were trying to think of a name. Uh, we couldn't think of anything, so we called it Kazi. So this is a situational uh, a drill that we've seen at a few different FBS schools. Yeah, I think it's really easy and it's, it's a really good way to train for high pressure situations. So what we do is, is we always have a, uh, an air horn out there. And then our song of choice is uh, DMX Rough Riders Anthem. That's what we do. The kids joke about it. They always say they get PTSD whenever they hear it outside. Um, but we then know that the Kazi segment has started and that can go at any point during practice. So this could be at any time, could be the very end, the beginning, the middle, whenever. And so wherever you are, you drop to that point, and then we have signs that Coach Lynch, our strength coach, will hold up, and that dictates whatever the workout is, whether it's push-ups, up-downs, mountain climbers. Sometimes I'll direct everybody. We'll do a couple gassers. And, again, this isn't punishment, which I talk about on the next slide. This is so we can train for situations. So your mentality is key to the drill. It's not punishment. But it is a win or loser drill with consequences. So if you don't win the sit, there are consequences. There'll be further conditioning after that. Again, it's not punishment. We're trying to prepare you for critical situations when you're tired. So one of the biggest things about this is we get everybody in their spots and they just basically drop right there and start working. Whenever I feel like we're done, you go to the sideline really quick and then I tell you the situation and the coordinators get the guys out and we go and run the sit. There should be very little lag time in between. It should be really about 30 seconds to less than a minute. 
The staff is already ready for whatever the day's drill is. And we always rep different things that are applicable for that day, whether it's a third down, a red zone, a two minute. So it can be one play. It can be red, zo uh, red zone, got to win the drill. It can be a full two minute. Uh, it really, really varies. You know, when you're trying to work full pads on the goal line, you know, we'll put the ball on the two or the three and say it's one play to score. And typically I'll tell uh, Coach Drez we're running the ball and he'll pick out his, his favorite run play and we'll, you know, try to smash each other around a little bit. So I think the situations are important, but this is something we do every single day. We do it every day during the season. Uh, we don't do it throughout the week uh, just because of the nature of it and how it's built in. We will do, there are some different things that we do at the beginning of practice to get guys ready um, that are up tempo, which we can talk about if guys have questions afterwards. But this is something we really do in spring practice and then training. Personnel evaluation. So, you know, I think it's important to have, and we have manuals that we give out to all, all of our players as well, just about, you know, what our expectations are, what are our team rules, what are the words that actually matter. Um, and again, the beginning of this really outlines that there aren't going to be a million more words that follow that up. So everybody should really know what the expectations are. Coachability is big. Nothing is a personal attack. I tell the guys all the time, our coaches at this point have been involved in the recruitment of the majority of our players, myself included. We care about you very much, and we are responsible to take care of you, especially at a place like the University of Maine, where more than likely you are far away from home. Everything is about football in terms of coachability. It's not personal. Your attitude is listening, learning, and improving. You will be coached hard in this program. You know, my big statement and the phrase I always use is coach them hard, love them hard. Um, I really, really believe in that. I think you got to love these guys. you got to let them know that you care about them. They won't listen if they don't think that. But I do believe that you got to coach guys hard. Um, I don't believe that because it's 2020, there's some different way of going about things. I think guys want to be coached. I think every player gets coached differently because that's how people learn. Really, we're football coaches, but all we are are teachers. We're just teaching the game. We're teaching life. That's what we do. But everybody has different styles and how they want to be coached. And I think you need to understand that and be, be able to apply that, but at the same time, be yourself. Um, and I believe in that. I think guys will always coach their own way. But in our program, we want to have guys who are held accountable, you know, which is obviously the next point. Everything is graded. Every day is graded. Um, you know, we have very limited support staff in terms of GAs, QCs, people like that. So our coaches are the guys doing it. You know, Coach Denneke grades the entire offensive line every day. And, you know, you're talking about five guys on one unit. And we're going to have 19 offensive linemen in the fall all getting reps in training camp. So one of our biggest things is grading, making sure guys have something tangible. And that's big in special teams as well, which I really don't get too, too much into um, during this presentation. But special teams is critical in our program. It's critical. I was a special teams coordinator a few years ago. Coach Jared Kite does a great job with it now. Uh, we've had a lot of success. We tell our players all the time, if you are not able to play on special teams, you cannot play offense and defense. I listened to a, an interview with Ernest Edwards the other day. We were talking about him before this started. Um, you know, he was obviously a very good player for us. He was trying to go to the NFL now. He said it in an interview last week that in our program, you can't play O or D if you're not on teams. And I think that trains a lot of different things in players, but it really holds everybody accountable all the way down. Because the coaches need to be accountable. They need to be involved in special teams. And we try to involve every single coach in some aspect of teams. I know I'm getting a little bit off on a tangent on special teams, but I absolutely love teams. I'm a little bit of a teams nerd. Uh, so if anybody ever wants to talk about teams, I would love to. But our biggest thing is holding guys accountable in general across the program. And then really at the end of the day, what are you being evaluated on? Productivity and whether you got it done. Did you do your job? We used to have a very complicated grading system. We got rid of that. Right now, it's a plus or a minus. Did you do your job? Every position's a little bit different, but the question always is, did you do your job? And that's our biggest thing that we ask the guys. Talk about this a lot, confidence. You know, I think confidence, is, it's, a, it's a tricky subject because there's a lot of different types of confidence. And especially when you're dealing with young men, you know, we take freshmen, who used to be the best players from wherever they're from. Now they have to acclimate in a college setting. You guys get them as well, um, you know, at your level, guys that, that need confidence. And we talk about the three types. And th this is something that, that I came up with a couple of years ago that, that I think is applicable to most people. Uh, there's really three types. 
fake confidence. You know, that's the fake tough guys, the guys who walk around, act like they're confident, they're tough, uh, but they don't really mean it. You know, that's not something we ever want to talk about in our program. We don't want anybody like that. We want to try to build these other two forms of confidence. Never done it. I rely on myself, and I need to will it to reality and take a leap of faith. So I'll use myself as an example, and I always tell the team this, and I, you know, I used to tell whatever section I was coordinating, now I get to tell the team, luckily. Um, but before the New Hampshire game in 2018, I had never called a play in a game. You know, it was the first time being a coordinator. So I'm selling these plays to our players, and we're practicing them and relying on them to take a leap of faith to really put this into reality. And then once you start doing it, there's real and tangible evidence so I can carry that with me. So the guys that have never done it, I, I always talk to them about it. Listen, you got to rely on yourself and will it into existence. And that's going to be hard at first. And then once you've done it, it's even harder to humbly carry it with you. You know, I've done it. It's on film. I always say that. Every time a guy does something right on film, we'll be like, well, it's on film now. You've done it. So guys tangibly have to be able to continue to carry that and build habits with it. I think confidence is a very important thing to talk about. And then one day at a time, like we said, everything in our program, championship mentality, winner, loser environment, everything, everything is about winning and losing, everything. And then just taking it day by day. We don't talk about anything else except today. I want to talk about today. When we have team meetings, um, even right now, which I'll get into at the very end, we talk about today. How do I get better today? What can I do? September 3rd is hopefully going to be there. It's going to be sitting there waiting for us. It's just sitting there. But what am I doing today to win the day? That's my only goal. That's the only thing I talk about. Our big phrase last year was elevate the standard. We kind of expanded on that a little bit. This is a good thing that Coach Lynch added. I really like it a lot. The standard in our program is personal accountability. You know, that's the standard. We talk about accountability and belief being our first core values, right? Well, that's the standard. I need to be accountable to myself. Well, like I said from the, from the outset here, we've got a pretty young team that's got a lot of experience. Sophomores, juniors, and a few seniors and freshmen, uh, redshirt freshmen that have a lot of practice experience. We have guys that have started in multiple games, dozens of games. So for me and our program and our staff, we're trying to build leadership and accountability for others. That's what a, being a leader really is. If I'm a young guy, that doesn't mean I can't be a leader. And people say that all the time, but I think it's really important to look at the standard as being about your accountability. And then when I want to be a leader, it's about building accountability for others. And then I continue to say this over and over again, and our staff repeats it back to them. This is the 2020 team. There'll be no other one like it. There'll never be another team like it. 2018 and all the success that we had, there, that was that team. 2019, that was that team. 2020 will be a different team. And I think we really need to embrace that because every year is different. Our values remain the same and we always expand and evolve, but the teams are always different. And then just the, the last thing before any questions, this is kind of what we're doing right now um, in case you know, anybody's curious. Um, you know, we have study halls every morning. So our coaches hold them, our academic advisors help with that. We do this um, with these guys every morning and then we have a makeup time that's uh, built in. Tuesday and Thursday, we have a team meeting every morning at 745. Uh, that's at, these are all mandatory things. We have four hours we can work with every week in terms of football. And then 8 to 930 right after that is either unit or position meeting. We are just getting to football now because we had registration and a lot of academic work to do because of the transition. Um, and we concentrate on football and the guy's mental health. Mental health being number one. Right now, mental health, academics, and football are in that order. We care about these guys and what they got going on. Everybody that's you know, involved in this meeting right now, uh, my family who's downstairs, and our players who are sitting at home, th there's no doubt that everybody at some point is struggling a little bit to deal with this quarantine that is going to continue for a good period of time. So what am I doing to help these guys? And, and that's a big part of our staff and building connections with your players. I would strongly suggest that, and a lot of you have been doing this a lot longer than I have, but we reach out to our players and talk to them basically every day. Um, I've made it my goal within the next two weeks to FaceTime with every single guy personally on the team, um, including our incoming players, which is about 100 guys. I just think it's really, really important that we continue to communicate because it's hard when you're in your house all the time. And uh, we'll get into the workout aspect of it here in a second. Uh, not study all guys is what we do with them. Staff, we meet at noon, uh, mostly recruiting right now. So 
uh, again, our coaches should be reaching out to, to all of you and uh, continuing to push to get guys um, on film, but then hopefully camp, which I'll talk about at the very end here. Um, and then our players you know, being the big emphasis that we currently have. Weekends, we do individual check-ins with everybody. So everybody gets a one-on-one -on -one, uh, time to talk. And we do all this through Zoom. It's Zoom or it's FaceTime. That's how we do it. We like face-to-face -face stuff. That's how we do it. Uh, I'll talk about this next line here in one second. But our camps right now, of course, are to be determined. Uh, it would have been June 27th for the one day. If it gets pushed back and we are allowed to do it um, in July, we will push it back to the end of July. So if we are allowed to have a camp, we will have a camp. We'll see. Obviously, uh, you know, the general health is number one right now, and that's all we really care about. So th that's the biggest thing. But if we are allowed to do one, we will do one. We will update everybody on that. And then the dead period right now goes through May 31st. There's no visiting. Uh, none of that's allowed. That, you know, could get extended. I imagine it might. But that's all up to the NCA. So that's a little bit about what we have going on. Uh, coach Lynch, I'm trying to get him to do one of these clinics. I think it'd be really good, our strength coach. Last weekend, we had, what, uh, we had him do something. I'm going to jump out of this really quick. And I, and I can share this with whoever would like to um, afterwards. But one of the things that, that he did, which, just give me one second, I apologize, is we had him actually demonstrate the workouts that we were doing because guys are naturally struggling a little bit. So I don't know if everybody can see that, but this is a YouTube page right here. And I have the link provided in there and I can get it to anybody. But all of our players now have a program and everything is voluntary. Everything's got to be voluntary. But he actually demonstrates all of these with household equipment and just kind of randomly thought of things and did really honestly about 100 different workouts here just with household stuff. I don't know how well this will actually play right here. Right now he has a rug rolled up with bags filled with books. He's doing an overhead sit-up. So, you know, we're doing a lot of different things like that, just trying to be really, really creative about it. Um, you know, there's challenges to this, but our guys need to stay in shape. And I, I think it would be really good to share with, with everybody here too because, you know, your guys are sitting at their houses. Some have access to fields for now. Uh, you know, there's a chance that gets taken away from us. So we'll really see how that develops. But I think it's a good tool for us uh, as we go forward and continue to build this program. So just in general, again, you know, the championship mentality and the core words that we use to create a winning culture here, it starts with the recruitment of great people. And then it builds and develops as the culture develops here. And that's something that I really believe. All of our position coaches know this, and it's something that I've always um, believed in and have said. But you're the head coach of your position. If you're a coordinator, you're a head coach of that unit. And I'm the head coach of the team. But whatever it is that you are, you should be the head coach of that and continue to embody and be aligned with whatever the values are of your program. I think that's how you create a winning culture. And that's how we've been able to, you know, begin to sustain success at the University of Maine. That's an ongoing process, something we work at every single day. And again, that comes through culture completely. So that's something we really believe in. Um, and again, I think the alignment is very, very important through the staff down to the players. So again, if anybody has any questions at all, um, I know our staff is going to be doing a lot of these, which I think is great. Uh, we want to reach out. We want to be involved, um, especially at a time like this. You know, football can bring people together, and that, that's really the, the avenue that we're trying to use with our players, but, you know, obviously with you guys as well. I think it's really, really important, and, and we can be an inspiration to a lot of different people. And, and you know, with Mike and, and Skip and everybody putting this on, I, I really do appreciate it. I, I think it's big time. I think it's a step in the right direction. I think it's very big for the state and for Maine high school football. So I do appreciate it. And um, again, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, um, please, I'd like to open that up. Can you hear me, Coach? Yep. Awesome. Um, See, we got Mr. Hardy down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Hardy, the new daring coach. That's right, new, new HC. That's right. Does anybody out there uh, have any questions for Coach? I'm going to stop the recording, and then if you guys want to turn on your uh, your mics and cameras, you can uh, you can go ahead and and ask any questions for Coach that you want. 